They have been called the monsters of the cosmos, regions so profoundly dense that not even light itself can escape their immense gravitational pull. For many decades, we firmly believed that black holes were fundamentally unknowable, their mysterious interiors hidden away forever, behind an invisible and impenetrable wall. But now the revolutionary James Webb Space Telescope has accomplished what was once considered unthinkable. It has peered closer than any instrument ever before, capturing unprecedented data that may finally reveal what is truly happening inside. They black hole. What it has found actively challenges everything we once thought we knew, and this new knowledge might just change the entire future of physics. The moment you hear the term black hole, you might instinctively picture a bottomless, dark pit. But the actual truth is far more complex. It is more like a layered cosmic monster, with each successive layer stranger and more bewildering than the last. First, there is the event horizon. This critical boundary forms the outer shell of a black hole, acting like a definitive cosmic point of no return. Nothing, not even a single photon of light, can possibly escape once it crosses this invisible border. It is not a physical wall, and you wouldn't even feel a distinct sensation if you passed directly through it. But from an outside observer's perspective, time itself seems to stop completely at this very edge. As the renowned astrophysicist Kip Thorne once profoundly stated, the event horizon is not a surface in space, it is a place in time. Once you're inside, your fate is irrevocably sealed. Next comes the brilliantly violent accretion disk. This is the intensely swirling high-energy storm that forms just outside the event horizon. It is primarily made of superheated gas and dust being relentlessly dragged inward. These particles are heated up to millions of degrees, consequently lighting up the immediate area in a blaze of bright X-ray radiation. This radiant phenomenon is actually how we first learn to detect and identify black holes. We observe this luminous disk shining brilliantly just before all matter vanishes from sight. It is eerily akin to watching a powerful spotlight beam just moments before the bulb itself is completely swallowed by the darkness. Then there exists the photon sphere, a bizarre and precarious region situated just above the event horizon where the gravitational force is so incredibly strong that it can trap light itself into a perfect orbit. It is not a place any conscious being would ever want to be. It is the silent, distorted eye of the storm. Within this sphere, light does not escape. Instead, it loops around endlessly, becoming severely distorted and spinning perpetually. If you were somehow magically floating there, you would witness the back of your own head bent completely around by the intensely warped space. And deepest of all, we finally come to the enigmatic singularity, a hypothetical point where gravity theoretically becomes infinite and the very fabric of space-time collapses entirely. We genuinely do not know what truly exists at this central point. Is it a genuine point of infinite density, or could it be something else entirely? Some advanced theories suggest it might not be a dimensionless point at all, but rather a bizarre, tightly packed core known as a Planck star theoretically built from fundamental quantum threads. But here is the ultimate kicker. Absolutely no. Information can ever escape from it, so we may never know for certain. As physicist Stephen Wright once metaphorically remarked, black holes are where God divided by zero. This intricate layer-by-layer -layer structure transforms black holes from simple mysterious objects into detailed and profoundly complex cosmic phenomena. But to really understand them, we must trace their cosmic roots. Because these incredible giants of gravity did not just spontaneously appear, they each had a dramatic beginning, and their individual birth stories are every bit as dramatic as their immense gravitational pull. Let us now rewind the cosmic clock billions of years back to witness how black holes first formed, how massive stars died, how primordial gas clouds collapsed and how the universe itself created these terrifying monsters from light and matter. Black holes are essentially the tombstones of dead stars, and like every grave, there is a unique and violent story behind how it was dug. The most common type stellar mass black holes form when a star many times more massive than our own sun finally runs out of its nuclear fuel. Without the crucial outward pressure from fusion to hold it up against its own weight, overwhelming gravity takes complete control. 
the core catastrophically collapses in a matter of seconds, squeezing all that immense matter down into a single, infinitesimal point. This sudden, violent collapse can trigger a supernova, an explosion so extraordinarily bright that it can momentarily outshine an entire galaxy. What remains left behind is the newly formed black hole, but some black holes did not form from stars at all. In the extremely early universe, there simply was not enough time for the first stars to live out their lives and die. Instead, gigantic clouds of pristine hydrogen gas, hundreds of thousands of times the mass of our sun, collapsed directly under their own immense gravity. These are known as direct collapse black holes, and they might very well be the original. Seeds that eventually grew into the supermassive black holes we now observe at the centers of galaxies. These primordial seeds fed voraciously on streams of gas funneled by the vast cosmic web, an enormous network of matter connecting galaxies across the universe like a giant spider web. These cosmic streams carried gas directly into the growing black hole's mouth, helping it balloon in size to incredible proportions. In 2020, astronomers even observed a black hole surrounded by six entire galaxies, all embedded within such a cosmic web. It was a dramatic feeding frenzy that occurred billions of years ago. Another profound mystery is how some of these black holes grew so incredibly big, so astonishingly fast. Just 900 million years after the Big Bang, we have already discovered. Black holes possessing billions of solar masses. How did they accumulate mass so rapidly? The cosmic web might be the essential key. It is like watching a newborn baby that already weighs 200 pounds. As one astonished astronomer said, we urgently need to understand how they're growing so quickly. Now that we have watched black holes being born from both dying stars and collapsing gas clouds, let us examine what happens when they begin actively interacting with the universe around them, because black holes do not just sit still passively in space. They pull, they twist, they tear things apart violently, and every now and then they get dangerously close to other stars and planets. In the next part of our journey, we will explore the violent gravitational dance between black holes and the celestial objects that stray too close, sometimes with truly fatal consequences. Black holes are not active hunters that seek out prey, but if something unfortunate wanders too close, they will not hesitate to devour it entirely. One of the most violent events a black hole can initiate is shredding a star apart. This cataclysmic event is called a tidal disruption event. As a star ventures near a black hole, the intense gravity pulls significantly harder on the side closer to the hole than on the far side, stretching the star into a long, thin noodle of hot gas, a process graphically known as spaghettification. Roughly half of the star's mass might fall inward, while the remainder is violently flung away in a massive, brilliant flare. We have actually witnessed this happen from an incredible distance of 665 million light-years away. What about entire planets? Could Earth ever be swallowed by a wandering black hole? Technically, yes, it is possible, but the statistical odds are so astronomically low that it is not worth losing any sleep over. The sheer vastness of space is immense, and planets are relatively small. The majority of black holes are located far away, and their gravitational influence does not reach across intergalactic distances. However, in exceptionally dense star clusters where stars are packed tightly together, smaller black holes could potentially roam, possibly capturing unlucky planets that pass too close. These captured worlds would become rogue planets, trapped in an eternal, silent orbit around an invisible gravitational master. We have also observed black holes in binary systems, which are pairs of stars where one of the companions is a black hole. These systems are incredibly valuable for studying black holes because we can carefully observe their gravitational effect on their visible companion star. The first black hole ever confirmed, Cygnus X1, exists in such a pairing. We cannot see the black hole directly, but we know it is there because its immense gravity pulls matter off its partner star heating it to extreme temperatures and causing it to glow intensely in X-rays. Finally, there is the intriguing question of entire galaxies. Do black holes ever swallow whole galaxies? Not really. They are undoubtedly powerful, but they are also incredibly small compared to the sheer size of a galaxy. Even the very biggest supermassive black holes account for only a tiny percentage 
of their host galaxy's total mass. Instead of consuming their entire host, they influence it profoundly, shaping how and when new stars can form. During rare galactic mergers, the central black holes can also merge, sending powerful ripples known as gravitational waves across the fabric of space, waves that we have only just recently started to detect. As physicist Brian Greene once noted, the black hole teaches us that the universe doesn't play by our rules. We have now seen how black holes can rip apart stars and trap entire planets. But despite their voracious hunger, these cosmic objects rarely consume more than they reject. Black holes also spit out matter at incredible relativistic speeds, changing their surroundings in surprising and dramatic ways. And this brings us to a question that has haunted scientists for decades. Do black holes actually consume entire galaxies, or is something else entirely happening? In our next chapter, we will dive into what happens when black holes and galaxies grow side by side, and what they ultimately reveal about cosmic balance. It is a dramatic and terrifying image, an entire galaxy being pulled inexorably into a black hole with stars and planets spiraling down like water swirling into a drain, but in reality it does not happen that way. To begin with, the sheer size difference is truly enormous. A supermassive black hole sitting at the center of a galaxy may weigh billions of times more than our sun, but even then, it only accounts for a minuscule fraction of the galaxy's total mass, typically less than 0.01%. The vast majority of a galaxy is composed of stars, dust, and dark matter spread out over hundreds of thousands of light years. Black holes are undoubtedly big, but galaxies are truly colossal. Instead of consuming galaxies whole, black holes primarily act as regulators. When they feed on surrounding gas, they emit enormous amounts of energy back out into their environment. This powerful outflow, often taking the form of highly focused jets or intense winds, can prevent nearby gas from cooling down and collapsing to form new stars. It functions like a cosmic thermostat, keeping galaxies from overheating or forming stars too quickly. This important effect, known as AGN feedback, actively shapes how galaxies evolve and grow. As one scientist aptly said, black holes don't destroy galaxies, they sculpt them. But there is something even more dynamic happening, as well. When galaxies collide and merge, their central black holes move gradually toward each other in a slow gravitational dance. Over millions of years, they spiral inward, eventually merging together in a final spectacular burst of gravitational waves. These events are relatively rare, but we have already detected several of them using advanced observatories like LIGO. This shows us that even though entire galaxies do not get swallowed, their central black holes can and do fuse into even larger, more massive ones. Another interesting twist is that not all the matter that falls toward a black hole actually gets eaten. A significant portion of it gets violently flung outward. When matter crashes in too quickly, it heats up tremendously and can form powerful, narrow jets of radiation and particles, some of which travel at nearly the speed of light. These jets can stretch across thousands of light years, effectively, pushing gas away from the galactic center. So in many important ways, black holes function more like cosmic engines than simple cosmic vacuums. As astronomer Avi Loeb summarized, galaxies don't fall into black holes. Black holes rise at their centers, so black holes are not the galaxy-eating monsters we once feared. They shape and guide galactic evolution rather than consume it entirely. But that still leaves us with a profound mystery. What truly happens inside these gravitational monsters? For the longest time, we believed that no one could ever know. But new technology, powerful telescopes and bold theoretical simulations are now changing that reality. Let us now journey closer to the edge than ever before. Because even if we cannot physically go inside a black hole ourselves, modern science is beginning to provide us with fleeting glimpses of what lies beyond the final veil. Forced for decades, the mysterious interior of a black hole was treated like a permanently locked room. The fundamental laws of physics said we could not open the door. Then in 2019, we finally received a key. That year, the Event Horizon Telescope, EHT collaboration, gave us the very first direct image of a black hole's shadow. Not the hole itself, but the dark silhouette it carved into the surrounding light. 
The target was the supermassive black, hole at the heart of Galaxy M87, 